Good morning, everyone. It's Friday, August 11th, 2017, and I hope everyone is having a beautiful day in the Lord. I have a couple of devotionals for you today, but first I would like to say the Our Father, so please join me. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Thank you, Father, for another day that we could serve you, Father. Um, we give ourselves to you as a human sacrifice, Father, for you to use us to bring your glory and to bring your kingdom. Uh, Father, we love you very, very much. We can't wait for you to come and take us home. Bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. This is called Life on Purpose. And the reading is from Matthew, um, I'm sorry, Hebrews 5, verse 8. Uh, Though he was a son, yet he learned obedience by the things which he suffered. If John 3.16 is the most recognizable verse in the entire Bible, then Romans 8.28 is surely next. Quote, We know that all things work together for the good to those who love God, to those who are called according to his purpose. Unquote. Christians love this verse because it says that everything, the good and the bad, that happens in our lives will be used for God for a good purpose. While that is comforting, Romans 8.28 doesn't tell us what the good purpose is. For what purpose is God orchestrating all the events of our lives? Fortunately, we are told in the next verse, Romans 8.29, quote, whom he foreknoweth, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren, unquote. God's purpose is to conform us to the image of his son. Our lives follow the same pattern of testing that Jesus has followed. Quote, he learned obedience by the things which he suffered, unquote. And you could read about that in Hebrews 5, 8. As Jesus proved his sonship by his obedience, we are conformed to his image by ours. Whether this day is good or bad in your sight, it has moved you closer to the image of Jesus. Glory to the Father. Hallelujah. And uh, A.W. Pink um, quotes, God is working out his eternal purpose, not only in spite of human and satanic opposition, but by means of them. So, um, yeah, Satan can come in and do something. And um, if he accomplishes something or the Father permits it, he'll work it to the glory of God. He'll work it all for the glory of God. And this next one is called uh, Dropped Calls. I'm sure you heard that um, phrase before. <laughs> the reading is from Psalm 66, verse 18. <clears throat> if I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear. Most of us are all too familiar with the phrase dropped call. It's the common term for a wireless phone transmission that ends abruptly, often when the caller is traveling between towers. It's odd to be talking away on the phone only to realize that no one is listening on the other end. In a way, the same thing can happen in prayer. Our sin can cause interference when we pray. The old book, The Kneeling Christian, says, quotes, No sin is too small to hinder prayer and perhaps to turn the very prayer itself into sin. Unquote. 
In Daniel 9, the prophet Daniel, about whom nothing negative is said in scripture, was praying to the Lord and making a confession. He said, quotes, we have sinned and committed iniquity, unquote. You can read about that in verse 5. And he prayed with deep contrition and earnestness. In response, the Lord gave him the great prediction of, quotes, 70 weeks, unquote, which is a cornerstone of Bible prophecy. Prayer is our greatest weapon our sweetest occupation and our highest privilege. A tender conscience, a zeal for purity and a habit of confession will keep the prayer lines open so that no calls will be dropped. And that is ever so true. And from the kneeling Christian quotes, it's it is amazing that any should try to retain both sin and prayer. Yet very many do this. Even David cried long ages ago, quote, if I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear, unquote. Yeah, no matter what it is, this is what I say all the time, you know, you it doesn't interfere with your salvation but it will interfere with your communication with the Father if you don't humble yourself before him and put it at the foot of the cross. Listen, this is like just common sense, people, you know. If you have sin in your life, if, um, you know, you're sitting at the table, I've, I've said this before, you know, like, you know, let's say you're um, an obnoxious child and you... You come home for you come come in the house for dinner, and your parents, you know, your mom cooks you this beautiful meal, all right. And uh, you get into an argument with your mother, and you say, you know, that you you don't like the meal, or I hate you, or this, that, and the other thing, you know. And you don't come back and apologize for what you just did, okay. Do you think that your relationship with your mother and father, with your fa mother, is going to be um, open, wide open, and honest? It damages. Like words damage your relationship, sin, sin interferes with your communication with the Lord. First of all, you might not be aware of it, but inside if you're truly born again you know you did something and this creates guilt and guilt creates a barrier okay look at a relationship if a man cheats on his wife okay if he has a conscience he's going to carry guilt and he's not going to be able to truly have intimacy with his wife because he has to hide something that he did the eyes are the window to the soul See this when something um, when something bad is done, it manifests. It 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 comes out in other ways to pollute, to damage. That's why there has to be transparency, not only in your relationship, human relationships, and and forgiveness and um, humility to apologize for wrongdoings, but the same has to be with the Father. Okay? So if you want to hear more from the Lord, if you want that open line of communication, uh, bring everything that you do that you don't think is right before the Lord. Just bring it into it. Confess it. And it's like cleaning the blackboard of all the writing, you know. God doesn't look back. He doesn't hold grudges. And he won't punish you. Okay? He wants to teach you. He's gentle. He'll convict you. And if he convicts you and you ignore the conviction, you go deeper and deeper into separation from him. 
That's just the way it is. And on that note, I'll say have a wonderful day in the Lord, people. I love you. Jesus loves you. Never forget how much he loves you. Oh, boy, oh, boy, does he love you. He's coming very, very soon. So keep looking up.